Hi there, I wanted to hop online and post a little bit of information about the masks that I have been figuring out how to make out of shop towels. I'm using these type of shop towels. In the United States, they are also sold under a brand called Scott Shop Towels. They look like this. We are not talking about paper towel. This is a paper towel. We don't want that. We are also not talking about actual towels. This is a towel. We also don't want that. What we want is this bad boy right here because we are going to make this. When you wear it, it's going to end up looking like that. All right, so I wanna talk through what has worked and what hasn't worked in my quest to make about a thousand of these. We want to preserve the actual PPE for our frontline workers, for our medical personnel who we owe a tremendous, tremendous debt of gratitude. They are truly our heroes on the front line. Um, we also want to preserve the PPE for our law enforcement um, who are also out there fearlessly working and everyone else who is out there working um, to fight COVID-19. So I've been doing a little bit of research and this is a fairly easily sourceable material. Um, I have seen it sold on Tractor Supply Company. Walmart and Target are currently sold out. Um, some of the mom and pop, some of the smaller grocery stores may still carry it, but this is commonly sold at auto supply stores. So any type of auto store may still have this in stock. But again, we are looking for something similar to this. It is sold under the brand name Toolbox or Scott Towels. Um, there may be some other off brands and feel free to do your own research. On YouTube, a couple of posters have posted things talking about or posted videos talking about um, the different tests that have been done and the various types of this. This is what sold where I live, was able to get it cheaply um, and source a lot of it. So again, I'm looking to buy to make something that is super quick, super efficient. This is not technically PPE. Um, this is designed specifically to keep your germs to yourself. Um, I'm, it probably does have some type of resistance against germs, but this is not technical PPE. This is not N95. This is not form fitted to your face, but it's giving us some type of barrier. Um, I'm wearing this generally layered under a cloth mask. Um, the CDC a couple of days ago came out with a recommendation that everyone start wearing a type of mask. Um, I figure it can't hurt. I wear this layer first and then I put the cloth mask over it. But I wanted to talk through a couple of the lessons learned that I've found out in the last couple of days that I've been working on this, show you what worked and what didn't work quite as well. Ironically, my favorite one, and I think the one that is most effective is the very first prototype that I made. So I'll quickly walk you through a couple of the designs. There's another design floating around the web that is more of a tightly, um, tightly fan folded design. Um, great in concept, but when you spread it out, it doesn't fit at least to my face. Um, I also had experimented with the ties that go behind your head, and I, I realized for my ease in taking it on and off, I actually prefer the ear loops, total personal preference. Um, if you are wearing this a lot, I have also seen designs that is a strip of ribbon that has two buttons um, on either end and these loop over the buttons. So the first prototype that I made, I wasn't able to source elastic and you should be making this out of stuff that you already have at home. You should not go out to go source this stuff. Um, if you're able to get it delivered to your house, great, huge debt of thanks to our um, frontline folks who are on the supply chain. Um, we, you guys are also our heroes, but you should not be going out to buy these supplies. This all should be made with something that you already have um, at your house. So I had these hair ties. Um, that was the first thing that I found and it worked fantastically. I also have this elastic. Um, you can basically use anything that, that works. You could use a shoelace, um, so just be creative. So this was the first time, the first one. This fabric can be torn. This is not a permanent solution. Um, I don't think you could probably wash it in hot water. Um, you should not be handling it by the inside, the side that's been breathed on. Um, one way to preserve this would be, I've seen some, um, some persons talking about putting it in a paper bag. It needs to be something breathable, um, like a paper bag would be perfect, but you have to mark which side is up. Because if you're gonna end up storing it flat, something like this, like if you collapse to the end of the day, you don't wanna accidentally pick it up and start breathing in the side, breathing in from the side that had been facing out way, uh, the last, or outboard the last time that you wore it. So you need to know which side is out. Um, you could also try spraying it with Lysol. Um, that would be one idea. And again, I am not an expert. I'm not a scientist. I am not a doctor. I'm just telling you what I have learned in the last 24 hours when I've been trying to work this problem. Um, so I tried a couple of other different designs. You can see some variations. The thin design definitely didn't work. Um, maybe it would for a little child. I don't have a, a kid, so I wasn't able to try that. 
Um, if you are making it for a person that's a smaller frame or a child, you're probably going to want to cut a little bit of the ends of the, of the fabric. Um, but this is one of them. It was just a little bit too bulky. I did try, I'm trying to reinforce the material so that it lasts a little bit longer, which is why you can see in almost all of my designs, there is some type of tape on every single edge. I realized this was total overkill right here. I had taped the entire fan fold. It just made it a little bit too bulky. Um, I'll explain through what I'm doing now. This one seemed to work pretty well. Um, the reason I didn't like it is because I don't like the nose loop that I put or the nose piece that I put in it. But this is basically the same type of design as this one, the one that I really like. The only difference with this one, and I'm doing this by myself one-handed, so forgive my one-handed filming. The, the thing that I like about this one is it ended up being a little bit more tapered. Um, it's just the way I ended up folding it. I think that I folded it with four or five folds in here. Uh, one thing to note is the folds are facing down from the nose and that seems to be more effective than the folds facing up. This one, the folds are facing up, so I did not like that as much. Um, this also, the end piece ended up being a little bit wider than this one. You can see the difference here. I like the shorter ear piece because when you're wearing one that's a little bit too long, it ends up kind of scrunching and folding and it can either pull away from your face or it can put strain on the material itself and so it's not going to last as long. So that's why I didn't like this one. Um, this one, I just got a little bit over enthusiastic and the rolling and it made it really narrow. This would probably be great for a little kid or somebody who's super petite, um, but it ended up being a little bit small for me. Perhaps I have a big mouth. You can tell me I have to watch the rest of the video. Um, this I actually did like. Um, I liked it because I liked the way I did the folds. However, a couple of things, sorry, this is up. This is a nose piece. A couple of things I didn't like it about it. This was way too wide. Again, I just explained that smaller, um, the smaller the width is a little bit better. Way too wide, so no bueno here. The other thing I did, I experimented with was not putting the tape on here and just leaving the raw edge. I do feel like over a, a, a couple of wears, this is gonna get really ragged. And I think in order to preserve the fabric, um, I do like using tape. So great idea kind of, but yeah, no, that one is also no good. Um, this one should go like this. I do like the fact that I did remember to do the folds facing down. Um, I actually like almost everything about this. Again, way too wide. And then the nose piece was no good. These obviously are not, I have tried them on, um, but I did unfold them a little bit. Um, this is the last, the one that I actually just made most recently. Um, I made a couple of different modifications. I didn't use duct tape in the entire nose piece. Oops, just dropped a straw. I didn't use duct tape in the entire nose piece. Um, and then I used electrical tape instead of duct tape on the bottom. And then I tried to make it a little bit thinner on the edges. I am, um, I do actually prefer, oh, and then I cut the edges here. I like, I liked what I did here. See how I cut the corners when I folded it in? So this is the last mask that I made. This is just another super exciting fan folded one. Okay, so first mask, last mask. Um, I am out of a crucial piece of material and that is the nose pieces. So I did a lot of experimenting. Here's some of the items that I used to experiment with the nose pieces. These are jumbo paper clips. So what I should have sourced and I will find a way to get them. I'm going to go dig in the bottom of my purses and my drawers. So the big paper clips don't work. They're too heavy. They're too thick. Um, and they don't form to the shape of your nose unless your nose looks like this. It doesn't work. So you need the standard, smaller, lighter weight paper clips. Um, and that is what I used with this mask. And I really think that that lends itself perfectly to this project. It's malleable enough so that when you put it on for the first time, you can shape it around your nose. Um, and it's also long enough so that you have a little bit more support because one of the things that you want is to get this as form fitting as possible. You don't want to be spraying your own germs into your eyes or um, which in effect you're basically spraying it out, out into the atmosphere. Um, you want this to fit as close to your face as you possibly can. And then if you remember too from the picture that I showed you, this goes under my chin, not the whole mask. This is not a fashion accessory like I've seen so many people wearing them. This does not protect your chin against anything. You have to wear it over your nose and your mouth. However, this little part right here actually tucks under your chin and the whole idea there is just to get it closer to, um, to your face. So this does go under it, which is why you can see it. it is pretty curved and I think you probably remember that from the picture. Um, but having the nose piece that also pinches tight into your cheeks is absolutely crucial. 
So in these other models that I showed you, I did a lot of experimenting. I tried this jumbo paper clip, ineffective, not malleable enough. I have tried a number of variations of these pipe cleaners. I have tried them doubled up, tripled up, quadrupled up, and they're too lightweight. Um, they just were not great. I also tried a variety of different, uh, what are these called, twist ties? They, twist ties could potentially work if you used a couple of them. Um, one of them is not enough to get the, oops, the tightness that you really need. Um, but you could, if, if you're in a pinch and this is what you have, make it work, right? Um, so this is from my gift wrap collection. This also would work. I haven't used it yet because um, I wanted to stop and actually film this video. This could potentially work. Um, it's thick metal. It's a little bit thinner than a pipe clip, than the, um, excuse me, than the lighter paper clip. But the whole point in me showing this to you is to get creative. We are figuring out what we have already in our craft drawer, in our junk drawer, in our shop, and we are making it work. So a couple of other things that I have um, kind of refined through this process is, and I'll show you, this is the most recent one that I made, which again, I really like. The only thing that I would change on this is that I ran out of the good paper clips, the little paper clips. Um, so I don't like the fact that this isn't pinchy. So this is not going to be the one that I wear. It's going to be another experiment. So this is the inside of the mask. Again, the good things about this one Folds are pointing down, which helps for some reason, just when you expand it over your mouth, it works really well. Um, this one right here, I'll show you. So I actually intended for this to be the outside. Okay, sorry, that looks a little bit funny, but I did a little bit of experimenting with the nose piece. So this is supposed to be the outside in the original design that I had in mind. Again, the folds um, face down, which really helps. So I had done um, a little experiment with just taping the nose piece right here on the outside. And for this one, I used a quadruple folded pipe cleaner. Did not work, it was way too flimsy, so no good. Um, you could theoretically use the paper clip, the lighter weight paper clip, and put it on the outside um, and have this duct tape showing complete personal preference. But what I wanna show you right here. So I used duct tape after I folded my mask and I'm using a clipboard so as I fold the mask, I'm literally clipping one side of it under the clipboard. Super efficient, because I'm just me. And that really helped me um, hold it in place while I did work on this side of it. So I'm taking a piece of duct tape, and I don't know if you can see on one side of it. You can kind of see right here. So I'm taking duct tape this way, um, and just putting one piece of it here, and flipping it over a little bit of the mask right here. So this is one continuous piece of duct tape. Um, right here and this again is the outside and also I should note I'm using staples to staple this so the process really quick um, to run through is I'm putting a nose piece on either on the inside or the outside whatever works for you it doesn't really matter um, electrical tape doesn't seem strong enough to hold it on duct tape also is I'm sorry um, duct tape works great scotch tape is not strong enough to hold it to this fabric the only um, tape that I have seen work for the nose pieces is good old-fashioned duct tape so I'm duct taping the nose piece either to the outside or to the inside, really doesn't matter. Folding it um, in a fan fold. I've been using the ruler to kind of just help me manipulate the fabric. Um, I, it looks like I'm doing um, about five folds, give or take, and that seems to work pretty well. I do wish I had made it a little bit more skinny um, on this side, but I'm taking that duct tape and I'm putting it over the end, looping it over the end. Um, I am not doing that before I fold it. I'm doing it after I fold it to reduce the bulkiness. And then I'm running this elastic. Here I'm just using this um, roll of elastic that I found. But again, you can use whatever you have. You can find a shoelace, you can use hair bands, whatever you have. Um, and I'm making a little bit of a pocket. So I'm gonna put the hair band or the elastic loop in there. Um, and then I'm just gonna staple it. We are using, again, things we have around the house. So I'm stapling it and there's a little pocket in here so you can't see it, but the hairband actually can wiggle and move side to side. Um, I kind of like using the elastic because um, it's easy to adjust for people if they have bigger ears or smaller ears. So it's easily adjustable. And then when you put it on, again, the first thing that you're gonna do is squish down the nose piece to your nose and then loop it over your ears and then just kind of fan it out right here. And again, this tucks under the chin. Um, I think I did mention the staple should always face outboard to the outside because you don't want any of that scratching you. Um, that would be painful. One thing that you could do, and I just haven't, um, is you can make it super fancy 
and put a little um, bit of electrical tape over there. Especially if you're layering these under a cloth mask, I would recommend that extra step because you can see it sticks out a little bit. So throw a piece of electrical tape, a piece of duct tape, um, whatever you have handy to help cover that if you are layering it again. My best guesstimate is that these masks will probably last maybe a week with care. Um, again, you wanna be extremely careful in how you handle them. You should never be touching the side that's, um, that is outside because this is gonna be the side that has germs um, from the outside and then the inside has your own germs. So this should only be handled by the earpieces. Um, there are a lot of videos online about how to put them on and off properly. Um, and also they should be distort, or they should be disposed of properly, which would be in a garbage can, not on the ground. Um, please post in the comments what you have come up with, what works great for you, some ideas. I'm happy to keep experimenting, but I needed to get a, an easily sourceable solution for about a thousand masks in about two days. So this is what I've come up with. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, and let me know what you think. Blast me in the comments with your ideas. Um, I'm not a YouTuber, this is my first video. Um, I'm not getting any clicks, um, I don't have any of that, so please feel free to be totally honest and share all of your great ideas, but hopefully this helps and keeps our actual PPE for the frontline workers. Again, you all are heroes.